Good morning. Good morning. We're going to be in Acts chapter 18, Paul's second missionary journey. We're kind of moving along with that. And so we're just excited to have you here with us today. And we pray that this uh, study is a blessing to you. We just wanted to, anybody uh, is has any prayer requests, just want to remind you, you can go to Pastor, send an email to Pastor Bspang at Comcast.net. And also, all these devotions are loaded up uh, on goodshepherdsc.org. If you ever want to look through the older devotions, uh, we went through the entire Gospel of John, and now we're going through the Book of Acts. So, goodshepherdsc.org. All right. So, welcome again. Acts chapter 18. So, the, now, uh, Paul was in Athens. Uh, now he's leaving Athens, he's going on to Corinth. Acts chapter 18. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontius, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. Because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome, Paul went to see them, and because he was a tent maker as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath he reasoned in the synagogue trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. But when the Jews opposed Paul and became abusive, he shook out his clothes in protest and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am clear of my responsibility. From now on I will go to the Gentiles. Then Paul left the synagogue and went next door to the house of Titus, Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. Crispus, the synagogue ruler, and his entire household believed in the Lord, and many of the Corinthians who heard him believed and were baptized. One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent. For I am with you, and no one is going to attack and harm you, because I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed for a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. While Galileo was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews made a united attack on Paul and brought him into court. Uh, this man, they charged, is persuading people to worship God in ways contrary to the law. Uh, just as Paul was about to speak, Galileo said to the Jews, if you Jews were making a complaint about some misdemeanor or serious crime, it would be reasonable for me to listen to you. But since it involves questions about words and names and your own law, settle the matter yourselves. I will not be judged of such things. So he had them ejected from the court. Then they all turned on Sosthenes, the synagogue ruler, and beat him in front of the court. But Galileo show no concern whatsoever. <laughs> Continuing with verse 18, Paul stayed on in Corinth for some time. Then he left the brothers and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. Before he sailed, he had his hair cut off at Sincre because of a vow he had taken. They arrived at Ephesus, where Paul left Priscilla and Aquila. He went himself into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they asked him to spend more time with them, he declined. But as he left, he promised, I will come back if it is God's will. Then he set sail for Ephesus. When they, he landed at Caesarea, he went up and greeted the church and then went down to Antioch. After spending some time in Antioch, he set out from there and traveled from place to place throughout the regions of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately, though he, only, he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. When Apollos wanted to go to Achaia, the brothers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples there to welcome him. On arriving, he was a great help to those who by grace had believed, where he vigorously refuted the Jews in public debate, proving from the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ. Okay. 
All right, let's pray. Lord of grace and mercy, thank you for this time together. Thank you for this beautiful day you blessed us with. Thank you for the gift of grace and mercy in our lives. Thank you that the word has gone forth. Um, may we be faithful in this generation to spread the good news of Jesus uh, to all that you place in our, in our lives. So thank you, Father, for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> all right, so you can see uh, the word of the Lord continues to go forth. Uh, there's opposition at times, but uh, God's plan is not going to be thwarted. Uh, it's going to go forward. And the Apostle Paul is going to be faithful in this. He received a vision from the Lord. He said, the Lord says to him, don't be afraid. Keep on speaking. Don't, don't be afraid. I'm with you. Keep on speaking. And he says the same thing to us. Uh, Do not fear is a, is a constant refrain that you see in the scriptures. God comes and says, do not fear. Do not fear. Um, I am with you. So God is with us. We shouldn't be afraid to speak uh, the good news that is found in Jesus, even when there's opposition. So that was in verse 9 and 10. Um, Paul receives this vision. You've not, not to be silent, but to continue on in preaching. And um, I was just going to say, but also before that, when he was preaching to the Jews and they opposed him, he said, that's enough. I'm going to the Gentiles. Yeah. Yeah, so he's still right in the same town, mm -hmm. but he leaves the synagogue and goes to the, the Gentiles. Uh, so, and he he started off by every Sabbath, every sa that would be Saturday for Jewish mm -hmm. people, every sa Sabbath he would go to the synagogue and reason with them. But after a while there was opposition that, that rose up to that. So he's like, well, I've got to bring the, uh, bring the message to the Gentiles then. Now, it's interesting in verse 12... Galileo. Um, Luke is a great historian. The author of Acts is Luke. Uh, the, he's a physician, also very detailed, very um, very good historian. And uh, we know when Galileo ruled because they found archaeology found an inscription with when Galileo was pro council in the area, mm -hmm. the years that he was. And it's like a I don't, I'm just saying off the top of my head, I think it was like a three-year, uh, um, yeah, Galileo was pro council of Achaia in, from 51 to 52 AD. So, we know when Apostle Paul was there. Mm -hmm. We can date the actual events here very, very precisely to within a few months um, mm -hmm. of when these things were occurring here. So that's really pretty cool mm -hmm. when you think about yeah. it. There's so much detail in the New Testament that we know when these things were occurring mm -hmm. within a you know within a few months in there, <clears throat> so. Um, but Galileo, <laughs> he's just like, ah, you know, this has to do with your religion. I'm not going to rule on this, and he lets them like beat somebody else yeah. in front of the courtroom. <laughs> it's just like, you know, I don't care. Go ahead, do whatever you want. Um, that's not really justice. Uh, so one of the things we take for granted as Americans is the rule of law. And, okay, it's maybe it's not perfectly administered at times, but we take a lot of things for granted that other people um, would have taken for granted uh, and didn't have. They didn't have rights. Mm -hmm. They didn't have anything like that. So thankful for the Bill of Rights, thankful for mm -hmm. the Constitution, thankful that we live um, under a rule, rule of law. Yes. We shouldn't take it for granted. Um <clears throat> So they beat him. Then they, they connect up with Priscilla and Aquila who were thrown out of Rome during this time of persecution of the Jews under Claudius, Emperor Claudius of, of, of Rome. And uh, we don't know exactly the circumstances surrounding all of that, but um, anyway, a lot of Jews had to leave Rome at that point, the Jewish population. And they were tent makers also. Yes. So that's what, and that was what Paul's, mm -hmm. um, so Paul at times in his ministry is what we would call like a worker priest. So he's working to support himself and uh, proclaiming the good news, proclaiming the gospel. So he's doing whatever he, he can and, and has to, to be able to continue the, uh, you know, speaking the good word of Jesus uh, to people. And sometimes he has to support himself in that. Now, ideally... Um, it would be others that are supporting him so he can devote himself full-time to mm -hmm. that ministry. And they, you'll see that at times, like uh, when um, 
uh, Paul, when Silas and Timothy come, then he devoted himself fully, it says, to mm -hmm. the preaching of the gospel. So that might have meant that uh, Timothy uh, and Silas brought a gift from the other congregation oh, okay. to support the work of doing that. So then he could go and devote himself fully to preaching. So, you know, those are some of the things the way the gospel is propagated, that we support the work of people that are evangelists that are going out, missionaries that are going out into the world. Uh, okay, so then, of course, they, they uh, started to travel um, back uh, to... You know, it's kind of like they're looping around now. They mm -hmm. they spent, actually, just kind of back up, they spent a lot of time in Corinth. Mm -hmm. He spent a year and a half mm -hmm. in Corinth. So that's a long time preaching there. Now he's heading back, and he heads back towards Ephesus. And he uh, meets up with uh, Apollos, who, uh, another person proclaiming uh, the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. But he needed a little bit more instruction. Uh, he, he had things mm -hmm. right but he needed to know a little bit more about the gospel. So um, he was he was taught Yeah, about and that's that. where Priscilla and Aquila took that, yeah. invited him in, explained things to him. Explained things, yeah, so that's the way it works. That's, mm -hmm. we, we should always strive to have some, as a follower of Jesus, you and I should always strive to have at least someone in our life, one or two people that we're mentoring. So somebody that you're, you could say, I'm mentoring them to how to be a disciple, how to be a follower of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So well, that's that's a task for all of us, and not just. To, I think sometimes in American Christianity we get the idea that oh, uh, that's for the work of the professional, the mm -hmm. the professional church workers, the pastors, the directors of Christian education, whoever else, the people that study this stuff. No, all of us are. Uh, part of the priesthood of all believers and called to mentor other people in their walk with Jesus, to disciple them, if you will. So that's an important task for, for all of us. And, and really think about who has God placed in your life that you can mentor? Who, who can you really speak to and show the mm -hmm. way of Jesus, the way of following Jesus? It might be your children. I mean, you're certainly called to mentor your children, but beyond that as well, it might be somebody else that God has placed in your life. So keep that in mind. Anything else? You can kind of sketch um, out at the end. Not, it's not that it's a big deal, but I just never noticed that Paul shaved his head out of a vow. I don't know if that's a huge deal, but I never even I never even caught that before. Yeah, so what verse was that in there? Uh, right after 18, 19. Verse 9, right after Ephesus. 18. Uh, yeah, because, oh okay, yeah, verse 18. Before he sailed, he had his hair cut off at... Centuria, because of the vow he had taken. Um, and let's just see if there's um, anything. Uh, probably, it, it was probably a temp. It says in the footnotes, it was probably a temporary Nazarite vow. Different vows were frequently taken to express thanks for deliverance from grave dangers. Shaving the head marked the end of a vow. Mm -hmm. So that's like it's a, you wouldn't let your hair, you wouldn't cut your hair during the vow, and then it's like the end of the vow, and you're shaving. I just never hair. noticed that before. Yeah. So little little yeah, snippets I know. of all, it's all like you, you know, you could read a chapter multiple times, and then something jumps out at you, you know, you never caught before. Yeah. So, so the next uh, on no, uh, we're not going to have a, a devotion tomorrow morning. I encourage you to go and uh, either come, we will upload our worship service either to this Facebook uh, channel or you can watch it at goodshepherdsc.org. We'll upload the worship service for tomorrow and I uh, hope you tune in and, and join us for that worship service. And may God bless you. Thank you so much for your prayers and support uh, for us and for the church. Mm -hmm. And please reach out to us at how we can support you and pray for you. Yeah. God bless you yeah. all. Yeah, enjoy the beautiful day. Yeah, have a wonderful day.